What is up guys? This is a unboxing of a Amazon warehouse product and this is the Razer Basilisk um, wireless gaming mouse. Um, so I bought this um, last week and it has been shipped to me fairly quick. So uh, what Amazon warehouse is, if you guys don't already know, is used products that Amazon receives. Uh, from customers that when they buy and they don't like it, they return it. So Amazon rebrands those um, those products as Amazon Warehouse products. And that's why you see this little logo over here. It says, thank you, this product has a second life. Um, so uh, when you buy from Amazon Warehouse, it also comes with different ratings of the condition. This one is being advertised as like new. And uh, so I would assume the product itself would would be in new condition. There shouldn't be any problems with the product itself. Um, however, the packaging, as you can see right here, is kind of damaged and opened, obviously. So um, basically on the listing, it just said like new item comes in original packaging. And this is what the packaging looks like. So you guys know, you know, when you buy like new, what to expect. And again, this is the Razer's Hyperspeed Wireless uh, Gaming Mouse. So the, the cool thing about this one is uh, it supports both 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity as well as Bluetooth. So you can see those being supported. So if you use Bluetooth, it actually gives you almost 500 hours of wireless use, which is really, really long time. You're not going to run out of juice anytime soon. And if you use the 5G, uh, include the dongle 5G connection, uh, you get, I think, around 220, 230 hours of use, which is still very impressive. OK, so let's just open it up and see what the mouse looks like. And this is the Razer Basilisk Hyperspeed Wireless Gaming Mouse. Again, I bought it used from Amazon for almost $20 off. OK, and this is the Nike like new condition. Some of the features really quick, um, advanced 5G optical sensor, um, onboard DPI storage, ultra long battery life, ultra fast hyperspeed wireless technology, six programmable buttons and Razer mechanical mouse switch. This switch supposedly is, is much, much better than some of the uh, switches used on the Logitech G903 gaming mouse. That mouse, I did a review a while back. That mouse is absolutely horrible. The switch breaks up pretty much after three to four, four months of uh, very light use. OK, so that is not very good. And this is the mouse itself comes with the user manual and your usual things. Let's take a look at the mouse. Mm. So this is the mouse itself. So as you can see, actually, it does look brand new. Um, there are some slight sign of use from the um, from the mouse, uh, uh, the pad over here, the gliding pad. Very, very slight use, but it's pretty much in new condition. OK, so over here on the bottom, you have a switch that toggles between Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz dongles. Let's find out where the dongle is. I would assume it's somewhere somewhere in the front. There should be a cover. So you pop the cover from here. And that should expose the dongle, which is hidden somewhere here. This is the dongle itself. So again, very, very compact, very, very small. So you're gonna you're not gonna have any trouble putting this on your computer. This is the battery compartment. It uses one double A battery and it lasts a very long time. So this cover is magnetic. As you can see, it's got three, I think, yes, three connecting points. So pretty much you just uh, put this cover back on the mouse and it should snap itself onto the let's see. Should snap itself on here and it doesn't really fall off okay and if you need to change the battery just pop the top off and expose the battery compartment so even if it's used it does come with the battery still here so that's quite nice i'm going to take the battery out so i i took the battery out this is a standard uh, energizer max a battery and i think all we have to do is just 
put it in there. Find the correct, like so. And I'm gonna pop the cover back on. Covers on, and looks like there was a blue light. So I was using the Bluetooth mode. I'm gonna switch to the dongle mode, which is 2.4 gigahertz dongle. And there's no indicator light, but I know if you look here, the the infrared light detected this little red laser in the mouse that actually powered on. So it is working perfectly fine. And now we're gonna put the dongle in and give it a first spin really quick. So the reason, again, I bought this mouse is my wife's old Logitech uh, Performance MX mouse is kind of on the verge of dying and it's been skipping a lot. And uh, um, it's also extremely heavy, okay? So it's about time to do an upgrade. That's why we're gonna retire this mouse and we're gonna upgrade to the Basilisk uh, Hyperspeed, okay? So let me plug it in and we're gonna give it a try. So I just want to weigh the difference of those two mouse before we start uh, doing the testing on the on the new Razer Basilisk. So this is the old mouse, the uh, Logitech Performance MX. It's at a whopping 164 grams, which is very heavy, okay? And let's try this one. And both of those are with AA battery installed, okay? So this one comes in at only 107 grams. It's um, almost 60 grams lighter almost 60 grams so about uh, yes uh, let's see 164 and this is 108 the difference is huge like this a lighter mouse would actually make sure to reduce your fatigue quite a lot during long mouse use so your hand is not gonna feel as tired uh, compared to gliding a very heavy mouse on the on the table okay so that is a huge, huge plus. So let's go back to the computer and we're gonna give it a try. All right, so uh, I just uh, quickly installed the driver for the Basilisk X Hyperspeed. And this is the Razer Synapse uh, interface. Pretty much when you install the Synapse, it goes into this page and you have a couple options. Okay, you have your dashboard, dashboard additional modules, global shortcuts, all those I'm not gonna be using. So basically I'm just gonna go right to the Razer Basilisk. If I double click, it actually leads me to the mouse tab over here. In the mouse, you can customize, you can check the performance, the calibration of the mouse, as well as the power savings feature, okay? Uh, I already named it to my wife's uh, mouse profile and you can add additional profiles as well, um, but there's no point at this, at this stage. So as you can see, all the customizable buttons are lined up over here, light up over here on the screen. And the interesting thing is there is a feature on Razer Synapse called Hyperspeed. Basically, if you set a button as Hyperspeed, if you customize the button as Hyperspeed, uh, it shifts the functions of all the available buttons to a different function. So essentially, you could literally have, uh, this is defaulting to six customizable buttons plus two of the left and right click. But if you use a uh, hyper speed, hyper shift, you could add another six buttons, you know, uh, to fully customize your mouse for gaming purpose or any other purpose that you want to use a mouse for. But that's a lot of buttons, okay? Um, so you have the option over there. So right now it's at customize. That's for you to customize the function of each buttons. If you go to the performance, uh, over here is where you select and customize your DPI settings. So over here, they, at, it's got number of stages. You can have a whopping five different DPI stages for your needs. Over here, I like to keep thin. thin I like to keep things uh, simple. So simpler is better. I have only two profiles, and if you only want one profile, just set it to a. A single a, a similar DPI for stage one and stage two and you wouldn't have to worry about accidentally pressing the DPI switch button which is defaulting to this button over here uh, to change the DPI setting okay another important setting in this page is the porting rate this is a lot this is a lot more useful for gamers basically what it does is uh, the number of times the mouse reports back to 
uh, to the computers and right now it's at a whopping 1000 times per second and usually if you have any other mouse that's not gaming mouse it's gonna default to 125 which only reports 125 times per second uh, the communication between your mouse and your computer when you are in this 125 you know times per second porting rate it's the mouse actually feels very jumpy like when you move around the mouse feels jumpy and uh, it's not as precise when you switch to a thousand it's extremely precise and smooth um, there is no jumpiness in the mouse so that's one advantage of the gaming mouse it's the ability to change the porting rate and uh, I'm not sure if this is supported during the Bluetooth connection, but if you want to use the 5G connection, the porting rate is adjustable. So 500 to 1000, both of those uh, rates are actually very, very smooth. So if you're not gaming, I would suggest you just set it to 500 uh, to save battery life because you know the more times you send the data to the computer, uh, the more battery, the more power draw that uh, the mouse uses, okay? So, um, but if you want the best performance, you, you like the thousand times porting rate, set it to a thousand and it slightly affects your battery life, not by that much, and it gives you a much more smooth uh, mouse movement. Uh, okay, so this is the performance page. So if you go to the calibration page, uh, there are a couple options to calibrate your mouse pad and uh, the mouse's, um, there's a, the tracking distance. Uh, what the tracking distance does is uh, the tracks uh, it depends on how much you lift your mouse either one millimeter or two millimeters uh, the mouse itself would steer would steer track onto the surface so um, so that de determines your lifting distance okay so usually if you're doing gaming and you want very precise movements you don't want because sometimes when you do big movements like you would lift your mouse and do a big jump and then you pretty much do this during gaming but if you're a normal user you don't do a lot of gaming you won't be lifting your mouse so really this tracking distance doesn't matter much i would suggest if you're not gaming set it to two millimeters and use the smart tracking this would ensure um, your mouse would not skip even if you accidentally lift the mouse just a little bit okay it ensure non-skip skip, skipness of your mouse okay so if you go to the preset calibration over here is where you calibrate your uh, your mouse surface again this is not I haven't found a difference uh, if you calibrate the surface or not for the Razer mouse that I have so by the way I have a couple mouses over here so I have the Razer Viper Ultimate which I did a review a few months back excellent mouse ultimate wireless gaming mouse if you want that definitely if you want wireless definitely get this for the best performance and this is the mouse that I just bought for my wife. It's a Razer Basilisk X Hyperspeed Wireless Ergonomic Gaming Mouse. And uh, the reason I did not buy this mouse is because I'm left-handed. And unfortunately, this is a right-hand specific gaming mouse. So I cannot use this, which is a huge bummer. Um, but uh, I'm setting this up for my wife. And I think this, uh, this is an excellent mouse for her to have for best, uh, best ergonomic ergonomic desktop general day-to-day -day use okay so this is the default surface that's over here but you can add an additional surface and you can customize the surface so uh, let's see so when it when it asks you to add a surface it only adds the razor uh, mouse pad surfaces which really doesn't matter much because any surface you add you can just you know do a calibration to fully customize and fine tune the surface that you add. Uh, but it looks like Razer really wants you to buy their own mouse pad. But again, really any mouse pad works perfectly fine and you don't have to calibrate the mouse at all. Um, if you go to the power tab, this is where you change the wireless settings, the wireless power saving settings. So uh, usually uh, it draws power. It draws a lot of power, even if you're not using the mouse because the, the light at the bottom is always on. If you set it to power savings, after one minute or two minutes, it actually turns off the light, uh, the tracking light on the mouse for the in the wireless mode, and obviously um, saves a lot of battery life. If you don't use your mouse a lot during the day, it turns itself off in power savings mode, which is great. Now, uh, by default, it was defaulting to, I think, three minutes, but 
I like to save a lot of power, so I choose two minutes, but I'm pretty sure if my wife comes here, she'll just set it to one. And uh, what it does is it goes into sleep mode, and every time you need to use your mouse, you just shake it a little bit, the power turns back on, and you have, I think, a 0.5 second delay, and your mouse is back to, you know, fully working condition, okay? Um, and this is pretty much all the calibration you can have, uh, for at least for this mouse. Again, this is a basic gaming mouse, so it doesn't have as many calibration options as there is, but it still is very powerful, um, as I just showed you guys, you know, in the customized options uh, and the DPI switch options, like you have a lot of DPI options. And the DPI setting goes all the way to 1600 DPI, so if you, you know, want a super sensitive mouse, you know, this, this mouse actually does perfect. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, again, don't forget to register your mouse when you buy it. Um, I actually bought this mouse used again from Amazon Warehouse. And uh, uh, interesting thing is I was still able to register the mouse under my name. So if it does need warranty service, it's got a two year warranty on those mouse, which is excellent, okay? If you guys have any questions about this Razer Basilisk X Hyperspeed Gaming Mouse, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below. Uh, otherwise, hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please do hit the like button or subscribe. And I should have more similar contents coming out for you guys. Okay, so thank you again. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.